Okay, so this is problem 2.4 out of Griffith's quantum mechanics textbook. Before I get through and solve this problem, please give the video a like and a thumbs up, and I'll continue to post more. So we have a infinite square well here. I'll just mention this is V of 0, V at A, and this continues onward. That there you have an infinite potential, and inside this barrier, those two barriers, you have a potential of 0. So you're not going to have the particle exist outside of that kind of defined area. It's kind of like it's in prison. And if you go through the textbook, you get this equation for the wave function of your um, infinite square well. And we're going to find our expectation values as well as our standard deviations for those. So we need to find the expectation value of x first and to do that well that's just going to be x times psi squared dx so you'll have a 2 over a out front integral x sine squared of n pi over a x dx and we're going to integrate this from 0 to a since those are our bounds you could do a u substitution here. This actually is not too bad of an integral. And then from here, you can see that dx is a over n pi du. We can also see u of 0 is 0 and u of a is just going to be n pi if you plug in 0 and a there. So this is actually kind of not that bad of an integral compared to a lot of integrals you see in this course. So we can just rewrite this. Um, oh yes, we also should probably mention that x is equal to a times u over n pi. Let's actually a over n pi, the integral from 0 to n pi, and then what do we have? u sine of u du, I mean I guess these cancel, that's something, right? And then I guess you could integrate by parts here, um, or you could plug it into a computer. a over 2 is your expectation value though for x. If you want to see this integral worked out again let me know intuitively though that makes sense because it's just as equal to be on the left hand side as it is on the right hand side the particle it's not biased either which way so it makes sense that the expectation value is a over two you could almost kind of guess that and the expectation value of x squared follows the exact same process except now it's x squared sine squared and pi over a x dx and you can follow pretty much the exact same procedure as before if you wanted to um, you can do a similar substitution you could plug this into an integral you might have an integral table but your expectation value of x squared will be a squared times one third minus one over two n squared pi squared. Okay. Now to find the expectation value of momentum, that's actually a little easier because we have that trick that we showed in a previous problem. That's just m times the derivative of your expectation value of x with respect to t. Well, there's no t dependence here, so this is just zero. Okay. And then to find the squared, well, that's going to be equal to, uh, let's see, we have our wave function, so there's no complex part to it, so we'll just say sine n pi over ax. The complex conjugate of a non-imaginary number is just that function again, times, this is where you have to be a little bit careful because the momentum operator, the order really matters. And it matters because we have to take a time derivative. 
this is also momentum squared. Okay, so in general, your momentum operator is minus h bar i d by dx. And this is going to be operating on the wave function that's not complex conjugated, which in this case is just sine of n pi over a x dx. It's going from 0 to a. And there's still that uh, normalization constant 2 over a out front. Okay. So what we need to do is, and you could also factor this out a little bit. I'll clean it up a little bit here. We have 2 over a times h bar squared. And then i squared is just negative 1. So that's just a minus sign. 0 to a sine of n pi over a x. And then you have to take the derivative of this twice. So you'll get uh, n pi over a, I guess, squared by the chain rule. And then sine of, not squared, but you'll get your sine function back again. And you should get a negative value. So I guess that's where that negative goes. Since you are uh, taking the derivative twice, one of those will give a negative. Uh, so now it's a lot easier. You can pull this this guy out, and then you're just getting a sine squared. So just for the interest of time, what you end up getting is that this is n pi h bar over a all squared. And then from here, we can do the same thing to find that we've done before to find our sigma x, sigma p. So you can plug in the different values, and when you plug these in, you should get a over 2 square root 1 third minus 2 over n squared pi squared. Uh, and I should say that's sigma, so this is the square root of that. That's why there's a square root there. There we go. And likewise, this can be defined this way. We've done this a lot now, so I don't think this is a huge problem. And when you plug this in, you should get n pi h bar over a. And now what you can do is multiply these two together. And when you do that, you'll get h bar over 2 times the square root of n squared pi squared over 3 minus 2. And if you want to know, I think you wanted to know where the product was, what states comes closest to the uncertainty principle? So in that case, if we look at this, we need to let n equal 1. If you let n equal 1, you'll get your smallest uh, uncertainty for this. And in that case, it'll just be nothing crazy here. Pi squared over 3 minus 2. And this still does not violate the uncertainty principle. So, but that's the closest you could get. So that's how you do problem 2.4. Um, finding kind of our important uh, expectation values, our sigmas, talking about uncertainty. So hopefully that helps. If it did, please like and subscribe, and I will post more soon.